Happy Monday and welcome to What Was Mommy Thinking? My name is Crystal. I'm a full-time working mom of three amazing boys and my family and I live in Texas. You have joined me for our Set Yourself Up for Success Monday where we do a little bit of cooking and a little bit of cleaning to help us stress less and have more success during the week. I find that these are my favorite videos to make and also my most challenging so let's just get at it. The first thing that I'm making here, as you can see, it's bright and early. I've got my cup of coffee there. This is the oatmeal that I make uh, pretty much every week. It is steel cut oats. You boil 10 cups of water or five if you only want to make a single batch and get it to a roaring boil. Then you put in two cups of uncooked steel cut oats. Again, if you're only using the five cups of water, you would just use one cup of oats. And then you let it boil rapidly for four minutes straight. And as soon as that timer goes off at four minutes, you give it a stir, get the lid on it, and set it to the back of the stove where it'll sit for at least six to eight hours, and then it's good to go. We put this in good old fashioned mason jars, stick it in the fridge, and then everybody can put what they want in it. Some people like fruit, some people like peanut butter, other people like me, like sugar-free maple syrup and just a dash of cinnamon. Next up is something that you guys have seen in other videos I've done on my Monday videos, and that is my little dash egg cooker. This little guy got so much attention from y'all in my previous video, I thought I'd give you a little close up look at it as it's doing its thing, and then I would show you how I unload and reload. Those things are very hot. I just shake the water off of the different parts, take those eggs out, and it really is this easy. Put in the water, Put in your dozen eggs, you're gonna do eight on the bottom. Put that tray in, put four on the top. Get that lid on and just push the button. And in seven minutes, perfection. All right, let's talk about that electric skillet. So here's what we're gonna do with that today. I bought a big tube of 90% lean ground beef at Sam's. I'll show it to you guys here in a second. When I get those, I like to go ahead and brown up the ground beef. I specifically bought it because I'm fixing to make gravy, which for most folks that means meat sauce. Um, but homemade Italian meat sauce and I need between four and six pounds of ground beef for that So I'm gonna brown that up first get it into a bowl in the fridge because it has to be cooked in a separate pot for a very long time So I'm gonna get that browned up first and then what I like to do with anything that's left is Brown it two pounds at a time so that I can either use it for tacos or for a soup or to make the insides for stuffed pasta shells anything like that so I just go ahead and get it brown and get it drained and I'll show you guys here in a minute how I package it up so that I can put it in the freezer and just take it out as we need it so here is that package of ground beef as you can see it is huge it ended up being a little more than 10 pounds and because of the great price that you get on it you get all of that at Sam's Club 90% lean ground beef for a little over $27. So for me, it's worth the savings to go ahead and get it and prep it, then to pay four or $5 a pound for it at Walmart or Kroger. I love this electric skillet. If you have one and you recommend a brand, please leave it in the comment section below. We have had this one, gosh, most of our marriage and it is definitely, the handles are falling apart and it's definitely time to start shopping around for a replacement for it. But I love this thing. We use it for breakfast, for dinner. We use it for pancakes. We use it for fried rice. We use it for so many things. And it is the only kitchen device or pan that I have that can manage to brown five pounds of ground beef 
with onions and seasonings at the same time without it just falling out all over the place. So if you recommend a good brand, please let me know down below. When it's time to get it ready to cool off so that it can be stored in the freezer or the refrigerator, I like to use glass bowls to put things in so that they can cool down without it being in something plastic. I just learned that way. I don't know if that's the right way or the wrong way. So what you'll see me doing here is putting everything that I brown into a glass container that I will later transfer into its more permanent container and put these glass ones in the dishwasher. Now that I've got that ground beef out, I'm just going to wipe the electric skillet out with a paper towel and get it nice and clean so that we can go with round two, which is just a couple of pounds of ground beef that I weigh out using a bowl on my food scale that's kind of out of shot of the camera. But I get that couple of pounds weighed out and get it in the skillet and just get it browned up. And then I'm going to place it in a glass pie plate for it to cool off and then we'll do that all over again with the third batch. While we're cooking all this ground beef, I thought I would ask if you guys have any family friendly recipes that you could leave me for how you use ground beef. I know that it's not the most popular meat, but it's something that I typically have some in the freezer ready to go. So if there's a casserole or a soup or anything like that that you have that would be good with browned ground beef, I would love to hear about those recipes in the comments below. And I'm really looking for a good cabbage roll soup recipe. So if you've got one in the archives, please share. Okay guys, I had a little less than a half of a pound left of the ground beef, so here's what we're gonna do. I patted these out into three um, burgers. I've got a little bit of oil heating in this skillet right here, and I've got my no salt added french fry seasoning that I make myself, and I do have a video about this. I just haven't posted it yet, but I'm gonna season both sides of these burgers, get them in that skillet, and it wasn't fully a pound, so it really wasn't enough for a recipe, and we generally use two pounds of meat when we make a recipe for ground beef because we usually double things. So I'm gonna get these burgers made because burgers are always good, and it's almost lunchtime. It's 11 here. So let's get these cooking and see what how it goes. As I happen to mention, I do have a recipe for making this sodium-free, best ever french fry seasoning. Of course, the original recipe does call for salt, but we do leave that out because of the dietary restrictions in our home. But I wanted to jump on and tell you guys that these burgers were such a hit with everybody. My husband and my youngest split one, and then my oldest and middle son both had their own. Everybody absolutely loved them, and my oldest asked if we could please incorporate that into the rotation of our normal meals. So from this mom, that's a win. At some point, I'm gonna have to invest in better lighting so you guys can get the full aspect of how yummy and delicious these things look. I feel like I should have some kind of cartoon character that's popping on right now and sort of like the camel does on hump day. What day is it? What day is it? Like what time is it? It's time to make bread. So as I told you guys last week, 
I did try a new bread recipe and it was phenomenal. So I thought I would share a little more today and I really wanted to cover this spoon and level kind of method where you take a spoon, put it in the measuring cup, don't tap it, don't knock it, and then just use a knife to level it off. This recipe is hands down the best one I've ever made my son and it is so simple. Even if you don't have a bread machine to prep the dough for you, there's only a few ingredients and it's so easy. It's a cup of water, it's a quarter cup of milk, it is four tablespoons of melted butter, three and a quarter to three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of sugar, two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast, and of course the original recipe calls for salt. Look at how perfect that turned out. I wanted to show you guys what it looks like inside of the bread machine and then getting it out and putting it in the bowl. This could not be any easier and I'm gonna go ahead and cover this with saran wrap and I let mine rise in the microwave. A, it's off my counter and out of the way and B, that's probably one of the warmer spots and it's, you know, the humidity and stuff in there helps it rise. So in the microwave for an hour and here it is, punch it down and there it goes. So now I'm just gonna get it out of the bowl, roll it out into a loaf type shape and get it in the pan. It'll rise in the pan for another hour to an hour and a half, just till it doubles in size, and then it's gonna go in a 350 degree oven for 30 to 35 minutes until done. Once the rise is done, I'm just going to coat it with melted butter on top, again being very careful not to press or put any pressure because that entire thing would collapse right down. And when it's all done, you get this gorgeous loaf. So I'm just gonna take some of that butter and coat the top of it. It makes the crust a little bit softer and oh so yummy and just beautiful. There never is a graceful way to get it out of the pan. <laughs> So it really is just a dump and a flip, and there it is. I'm gonna let it cool for at least 10 to 15 minutes. Now that my ground beef is completely cooled, it is time to package it up. There's that silicone graduated cylinder that I use, and I'm just gonna put a Ziploc bag, freezer Ziploc bag down in there and scoop it in. And I tried to do a different angle with the second bag, and I made a huge mess, but lucky for me, it all fell on the counter. Once I get it in the Ziploc bag, I squeeze as much air out of it as possible and get it nice and airtight. I seal it up and then I'm gonna stick it inside of another gallon Ziploc bag. I'm gonna do the same thing with that other batch after I decorate my countertop with a bunch of it. My poor dog, she really wanted me to drop some too. So once I pick all the pieces up and put it in there, I'm gonna get this bag filled up, rolled up, and I can stick three of these in one gallon Ziploc bag, but today I only have two. Those will go right in the freezer and be ready. So some of you have asked, like, Crystal, what do you do about anything that drops on the floor or makes a mess? Well, guys, let me just tell you real quick, little infomercial right here. You got to get yourself one of these. Now, you're not going to find this on the QVC or the HSN because this, this is a German model. Now, this will clean up any mess that you make on your meal prep day. And I'm going to tell you, like any other model out there, her battery never dies. See, she responds to alarms. She knows the eggs are done. And she alerts us to anything that's going on. She's also very receptive. It's almost as though I have a sensor on me that attracts her to me. And she knows when I'm cooking. And she is on the prowl, cleaning up those messes left and right. And she responds to commands like sit, Huh? Good girl. Now, 
No two models are the same. You can't get these just anywhere, but I highly recommend that you look into one if you need a Hoover Shepherd 2000 and, oh, she's a 2018 model. Yes, she is. Oh, 2019, you're newer than that, aren't you, baby girl? Yes. But she does a good job cleaning up for me while I cook on Saturday till I can get to it on Sunday. She has assumed the position. She's just waiting on a little bit of a job of cleanup to do, aren't you, girl? Coco, who's your Coco? Each week I'm trying to show you guys a few little tips and tricks or hacks around the household. So today I thought I would show you how I change the wax in all of my Scentsy warmers. I take a jumbo cotton ball, I put it in the dish. If I have more than one cube in there, I typically have to use more than one cotton ball. Once it's completely dried out, I just pick whichever scent I want. The sugar cookie is a favorite of mine. And I put one cube in each of my warmers. I've got several warmers throughout my house. I thought I would show you how I do a few of them so you would get the idea in case you were wondering how you change out your wax. So one thing that I have to do every so often is we have these air purifiers and as you can see here there's a pre-filter and then there's a back filter and this is where you turn it on it goes up to turbo when this little red light comes on it means that I have to change the pre-filter so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off Whoops. okay I'm gonna turn it off and then I'm gonna set you guys up so that you can see what I do here the filters come in this pack right here and um, it's for a couple of different models of the Honeywell and all of our air purifiers are Honeywell and there's a template inside and you just take it out and you cut this sheet of pre-filter to size which I have already done and so here's my pre-filter and I'm going to get you guys set up on the arm of the couch here so you can watch me change it out. So don't be disgusted by all of the pet hair. That's kind of one of the biggest reasons we have them. See how disgusting this is? It just grosses me out. But I fold it down on itself and then fold it over and try and capture anything stuck in there. And I just think this is the grossest thing ever. And as you can see, it's not gonna be long before I have to replace this one. This one's already pretty dark. So I anticipate that I'm gonna be replacing those pretty soon. There's a little clip up here that this slides up under. And then there's some Velcro here on the sides and a little, I think I may have cut it just a tad bit too. Nope, I did it, there we go. I just need to move it over. So you get that in place, okay. And there's a little bracket down there on the bottom. You clip, clip it into place. And then when you turn it on, to let it know that you've done your job, you push and hold this for three seconds. The light goes off. And you can turn it up full blast. And that's what we do. In keeping with the spirit of showing you guys a different part of my house each week that we clean, I decided to take you upstairs to our upstairs living room today. It is our hangout space. It is where all of the video games are kept as far as the, um, I want to say it's an Xbox and a Wii or I'm not even sure guys to be honest with you. We have an air hockey table up here. The popcorn and candy machines you see in the back are not currently operational. Um, we have to fix a piece for the candy machine and the popcorn machine we just haven't used for a long time. So I'm going to go through, get everything decluttered, taken down, put away, put things in people's rooms where they belong. There is my second little shadow, my sweet little Shih Tzu Boomer. 
but once I get everything put away and taken off of surfaces where it was never supposed to be in the first place, then I'm gonna dust and run a vacuum. And I like to go ahead and vacuum our sofa that we have up here, it does catch a lot. So you're just gonna see me do that and sit back and enjoy the music. the top of our stairs this is the upstairs living room if you were in my live last week those are the black cabinets that I was talking about that need to be done there's our little bookcase and that is our little business that basically is shut down and this is what we affectionately call the big brown couch <laughs> so lots of video gaming and things and uh, yeah that is it That'll do it for this week, everybody. I want to thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video and for sharing some of your time with me yet again. You guys are the most generous people ever. Just a friendly reminder that What Was Mommy Thinking Wednesday will be live Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, and I can't wait to see you there. Until then, I hope you all have an amazing start to your week. I hope that you've done something that'll help you have more success than stress this week, and I can't wait to hear all about it in the comments below. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.